So now that we have Hammer set up and you know the basic interface we're going to be working with, let's create our first room. So looking at our 2D views, you'll see green lines intersecting each other. This is your map's origin point. The grid these operate on can be adjusted by hitting the grid plus or grid minus buttons in the top left here, or by pressing the left bracket to shrink it or right bracket to expand it. You can see the size of the grid currently being used in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. As you start blocking out your map, it's a good idea not to lower your grid size too small, as the smaller it gets, the easier it is to make sloppy brushwork and inevitably cause yourself problems down the road. I recommend no smaller than 16 or 32 units to start. We're going to keep it on 64 for now though. To create our first brush, we're going to first select the material we want to use on it. You can either click the texture application button and go through there, or a shortcut is the box on the right hand side here. Click Browse to bring up our textures. Let's start things off right with Dev Textures. Type in TF for the keyword and Dev for the filter. Let's go with this gray grid texture here. Double click on it to select it. You'll see that your current texture is shown on the right hand side here, right above the browse button. Now click on the brush tool and move over to the 2D top view. Click and drag a box here. You'll see two sets of numbers appear around your dotted line box. These are the dimensions of what your brush will be. Drag it out so it says 1024 by 1024. This box represents where the brush will be. Try moving it around a bit in the different 2D views and back your 3D view out to get a bird's eye view of it as well. I'm going to center mine on the grid because I like to keep things neat like that, I don't know. Uh, now to create the brush, press enter. Congrats on your first of many brushes. Now that we have our brush, we can manipulate it a bit using a few different methods. Click on the selection tool and click in the 3D view anywhere on the brush. This will highlight it and show that it is selected in every view. You can resize it the same as before by clicking and dragging on the squares at the edges of our box in a 2D view. If you press X, you'll gain these constraints in the 3D view as well, and dragging them will move them based on the angle you're viewing it. Now if we click anywhere inside our box, you'll notice the constraints change from boxes to circles in just the corners. Grabbing and moving one of these allows us to rotate our box freely. Note that this will generally make your brush off the grid and harder to work with in the future, so I highly recommend leaving it on the grid at this point. You can also set rotation to snap to 15 degree increments by going to Tools, Options, 2D views and check default to 15 degree rotations. When you rotate with this, you'll see it snap into place. This can be very, very useful. Uh, by holding down shift and dragging, your brush will smoothly rotate again as well. Clicking on the box a second time puts the constraints on the inside edges of the box. Dragging these will skew your brush. Keep in mind in Hammer that when you make a mistake, you can always hit Ctrl Z to undo them. So now that we have our base brush and the means to manipulate it, let's put some walls around it and make it an actual room. First, we'll select a new dev texture. I'm going to go with this darker gray wall here. We'll start our walls by clicking and dragging a long shape in either the side or the front 2D views. We'll go with 512 hammer units with this. Press enter. You can see that this automatically stretches the new brush to match our previously selected brush. So since our opposite wall is going to be the same size exactly, we can clone this wall over to that side. To do so, select the brush, hold down shift, and drag it to the other side of our floor. Let go of the mouse and your brush will be cloned. Now we can clone it again for the next set of walls and then drag it to fit between our two previous. So I'm going to go to the top view here and clone that brush to the opposite side using shift drag as before. Now is a good time to explain an important aspect of source mapping. Source maps are essentially just a series of rooms. Even outdoor areas are sealed off with skybox brushes rather than normal ceilings. The black space around your box is called the void. If the inside of your map can touch this void in any way, it is called a leak, and the map will not compile properly. This is what creates that trippy Hall of Mirrors effect you may have seen before. The way I like to think about this is that around our map is a vacuum. If our map isn't fully sealed, the air inside leaks out of the map and is broken. No matter what size your map is, this concept is essential to creating a properly working map. With that in mind, let's create our ceiling. We'll select our floor and clone it to the top. I'd like this to be the same texture as our walls for now, so I'm going to hit the Apply Current Texture button with the ceiling selected to do so. Now we have a fully sealed and enclosed room. All that is left to do to be able to spawn into the map is to create a spawn point. This entity we will be placing will tell the game where to set you in and in what direction to face you when you spawn. To place it, select the Entity tool and click where you'd like it in your 3D view. By default, Hammer will place a spawn point first without changing anything. Convenience! And because you have a Boojum Snarks resource pack, your spawn points will use this red and blue split engineer model. This is a good time to zoom out a bit and check out thoroughly the scale of your room compared to this model. It's going to be the same size as an engineer in-game. It's a good idea to try to wrap your head around the scale as early as possible while mapping. It's going to take you a while and quite a few maps to get it right, but eventually you'll get a good eye for it. So now that we have our spawn entity, we can select it and move it around by using any of the views, same as our brushwork. I'm going to move mine to the very middle of the room and rotate it to face this direction. Now a quirk with spawn points is that they need to be a little bit off the ground and not touching anything else around it for it to work properly. So we're going to lower our grid size to 16 hammer units and raise our spawn one space above our floor. Now we're going to save our map. Go to File, Save, and give your map a name. 
It is very important to always only use lowercase letters, no spaces, and no special characters other than underscore. Doing so can cause issues down the road, including servers not being able to actually run your map. We'll call it first underscore room and hit save. Saving it that way is saving it as a VMF file, which is in a text format. To get it to play in game, we'll first have to compile it, churning it into the BSP format. A way I like to think about this is a VMF is like a Photoshop PSD file with all the layers available to manipulate. When you compile it into a BSP, it's like turning it into a JPEG or other format. The layers are no longer there, but it's available to use elsewhere now. To compile, go to File, Run Maps. A window will pop up giving you a few different options. For now, we'll leave these all to default. Hit OK and let it go. Now the time it takes to compile varies drastically from computer to computer and is based on many different factors. The more complex your map is, the longer the compile will take. The better your computer, the faster it will be. When it compiles, it will often appear to freeze up. Let it do its thing until it's done. A simple box like this should be pretty fast, less than a minute on any modern computer. When the map is done compiling, the game will automatically start and load up your map. And here we are in our very first room. Run around it a bit and get an idea of the scale we made. It's a pretty decent sized room with a rather tall ceiling. You'll notice everything is very flat lighting right now. This is called Fulbright and is caused by not having any light entities on the map. In the next episode, we'll go over the basics of lighting, introduce a new tool, and open our room to the sky.